Hello and welcome to another trike bike video. In this video we are assembling the cargo trike. The first step is to unpack the cardboard boxes. We find it best to uh, put the box in somewhere that's got a clear area to work around and very carefully cut open the side of the box so you can low everything out on the ground on the cardboard box itself. You need to be particularly careful when you're cutting the cardboard boxes open that you don't cut the items inside. So make sure you have a good look and nothing is in way of the knife. Once the box is open, you can remove the, uh, the front wheels. Sometimes they get caught on the other spokes, so don't pull everything hard, just move it around gently until it comes free. Jake is just removing the front wheels, and we'll use these later in the assembly. Remove the plastic wrapping off the front of the main bike frame. I would recommend leaving the wrapping on the rest of the frame because this will protect it from scratches during the rest of the assembly process. Remember when you are cutting, make sure you don't drag the knife across the bike itself because you will scratch the paint off the frame. This bracket is uh, what connects the main bike frame to the cargo box frame. Jake is undoing the box now. In this smaller box, we have all of the uh, wood that's used in the cargo trike, as well as the front frame. Again, when opening the box, have a good look to make sure there's nothing in there that can be in the way of your knife so you don't do any uh, scratches or damage during the assembly. Tear the box open to get access to everything inside and Jake is just removing the wood which makes up the main part of the cargo box. Now we're removing the frame and again very carefully using a sharp knife that is there for to protect the uh, frame. Once the bubble wrap is removed, 
pull the frame from the packaging and lay it on the cardboard so it doesn't get scratched on the ground. Now we come to all of the hardware, all of the nuts and bolts and other parts that are used in the assembly of the trike. I'm now opening the main bolt which holds the cargo part of the trike and the bike part of the trike together. This is quite a large bolt which goes through both assemblies. There are washers that are placed, two bearings and a spacer which must be used. To mount the bearings we use a little uh, drift that we uh, put the bearing on and we can hit it with a hammer without damaging it. But if you don't have anything like this, you can use a piece of wood. Don't hit the bearing head with a hammer without putting a piece of wood or something else there because you will damage the bearing. Sometimes they can be a little bit tight to get them in there because the tube will sometimes distort marginally because of the welding. So just give it a tap a few times, take your piece of wood off or your drift and have a look and then go back again. When you check, make sure that it is going in square and in the end it should be nice and flush mounted with the surface. We're going to rotate the frame. This will give us access to the other side. An important note is before you put the second bearing in, you must put in the spacer. This spacer here is to stop the bearings getting damaged when everything is tightened up. You can just drop the spacer in for now, the bearing on top, a, a drift or a piece of wood, and drive it into place. This is the hardest part of the assembly and I would recommend having someone else help you do this. What we're doing here is we're mating up the main bike frame to the cargo box frame. You need about three hands to do this properly, but you need to put the bolt in first. Once it's through the tab at the top, we need to insert a washer on the inside between the trike frame and the bike frame. We also need to do the same at the bottom end. So you can see now, we're just moving everything around, getting the washer in place, and eventually you can just push the uh, main bolt through. If it won't go through, it means the spacer is uh, not in the middle. So you can just use your finger to align the spacer another washer in at the other end and just gently push it through. Work it through and align everything. You can do this by using your fingers to feel where you're going. And finally, we attach the last washer and the nylock nut. Before we tighten everything, it's really important to put a fairly good amount of Loctite on the thread to stop it from ever coming undone. What I mean by a fairly good amount is probably the size of two dollops, the size of a match head. This will stop everything from coming loose sometime in the future and keep everything secure. There's no torque setting on this particular nut. So uh, what we recommend is just make it 
but pretty much as firm as you can. We're now going to prepare the wheels for installation. So the first thing to do is to inflate them. On the cargo trike, we recommend having all of the tires set at around 55 PSI. As you inflate them, make sure they're properly seated on the rim so there'll be no blowouts or bubbles. Identify the bolts that are used to hold the disc onto the hub itself. We drop the disc on, align it with the holes, and now we just mount those little bolts to hold the disc onto the bike wheel itself. What I recommend is just doing them loosely by hand at first, and then tightening them with a Allen key wrench until they're touching and then finally go around and do everything firmly. The way you will tighten these bolts is to actually do them cross from each other. So we don't just tighten one and go round the, round the circle. We tighten one at say 12 o'clock position and then go and do the one opposite at six o'clock and then go to three o'clock and then nine o'clock and so on until everything is tightened. We are now going to fit the wheels to the main frame of the uh, cargo bike. Just position everything and just do it loosely to start with. We only want them finger tight. There's a lot of movement in this area, and if you don't do it properly, it can mean that the tire is not sitting correctly and, and it will be on a lean, and this will cause a lot of problems while you're riding. Once you have the wheels on loosely, just roll everything backwards and forwards a few times to make sure the uh, wheels are level. And then we need to go and tighten the wheel nuts. So there's one nut on each side, and it's really important that you put some weight on them when you're doing them up. In this shot, you can see Jake is kneeling on the trike frame, and this will securely hold the trike frame onto the wheel axle. It's really important that you do this step. Then the same again on the other side. Make sure you put weight on the trike and do up the nuts nice and firmly. We've now spent about five minutes going through and separating all of the hardware so we know exactly what we've got and where it goes. We're now going to fit the steering dampeners these are required because it slows down the steering of the uh, trike while you're riding. So it gives it some resistance and it keeps it tracking nice and straight. 
These are your pneumatic struts, just like you see on the boot of a car or the tailgate of a hatchback. We need to firstly put one end into the, uh, into the frame and just loosely put the nut on the bottom. Then comes the hard part. We actually need to compress these struts to get them to align with the hole on the bike frame. So you'll see they're about uh, 50 millimetres too long and we need to push it up. So you may need a hand to do this. It can be difficult just to push it in. Once it starts though, it, it actually will go in quite, quite easily. So just push it in, line up the, uh, the fitting, push it through, then put the nut on the bottom. Just while they're loose, just go through and tighten them slightly so they can't come off. And then we put a spanner on the top and do them up. If you don't use the spanner on the top while we're doing them up, the knuckle joint can rotate by itself. Do these up nice and firm and there's a, a strut on both sides. We're now mounting the disc brake to the frame. Again, everything's just done loosely. So line it up, put in the bolts, give it a good wiggle around to make sure everything's clear and then you can go through and tighten the bolts up. When you have the bolts tightened, you want to make sure the wheel can spin freely and there's no resistance. If you look down between the disc and the caliper, you'll see there there's a bit of a gap on each side and that's perfect. Once we've got that position, we can tighten everything up and we can come back and adjust it later. We sorted the nuts and bolts out before. Go and find the long ones because they're the next ones we use during the assembly. You'll see here the corner post has been put in place by using those long bolts, the nuts and a washer. And we need to keep everything nice and loose. Here we've fitted the four corners and we're just putting in the bottom tray of the uh, cargo box. It helps sometimes to use a screwdriver just to line everything up and then you can get the bolt straight through. Washer and nut on the bottom. It's really important when putting on these corner posts that you keep the uh, nut and bolt loose for now because you need to move everything around when you're putting on the wooden sides and the front and back. You'll see here in this shot we push the uh, bolt through. All of the brackets have got slots so there's lots of movement. Washer goes and dome nut goes on the outside. Here we're fitting some little bumper stops. These are just like the handlebar grips. A little bit of soapy water will help you put them on. So just wet them and then slide them on all the way. These are here for when you're cornering the trike and you get to the maximum turn angle. It doesn't bash into the frame. It gives you some uh, suspension when you're doing a really tight turn against the uh, frame. We're now going to fit the wooden sides front and back to the, uh, to the trike box. You'll notice here Jake is fitting the back which is closest to the rider. And if you look at the two uprights on either side you'll see both of these have two tubes. One tube is for the handlebars and the other tube is for a rain cover if you uh, fit one. 
So here Jake's aligned the box and the bracket. He puts a bolt through from the inside, a washer on the outside, and then the dome nut pointing outwards. Again, everything is nef nice and loose so you can move everything around and get all the holes to align. If you prematurely tighten these, you'll have a lot of difficult getting them in and you'll probably have to drill the holes. Once you've got all four sides of the box on and everything is in place, you can then go through and tighten everything up. Don't over tighten it. Just use a screwdriver and a spanner rather than a rattle gun. Everything needs to be just done up firmly. Straight after this, we can also fit the mud guards for the trike. Both of the front wheels have mud guards that go over the top and attach to the frame. We're now fitting the handlebars. Push in one side first and then get the other side in. Push it down till it's flush at the bottom and then tighten up the knocking nuts. We're now fitting the seat post. Just tighten everything up so it's nice and firm. Slide the seat post in. I just pick an intermediate height to start with and then close the clamp. This will hold the seat post firmly in place. We can then fit the seat. Slide the seat on the stem and using a 13mm spanner tighten the nuts. You'll notice how Jake slightly lifts the seat before he tightens everything up. This is really important to get a good clamping position on the seat post. If you tighten it up with the seat post being at the bottom of the clamp, it won't be firm. Finally, we fit the pedals to the bike. These pedals are marked left and right, so make sure you put them on the right sides, and one of them has a left-hand thread. The spanner that's used to tighten them is 15mm. We're now just fitting the front brake cables. It's important to have the uh, cables set up correctly. And uh, there's a few little tips we use when doing this. Unwind everything and lay it out flat on the bench. You'll need to put the outer part of the cable on the wire part for the uh, bottom section where it goes between the uh, frame and the disc brake caliper itself. So just slide these on. When you've got both of these outers on, they then need to be pushed into the fitting. So this is a plastic splitter and we need to push the cable ends into there. And a little trick we use to stop them falling out is we've just put a couple of rolls of tape around it to keep the outer connected to the splitter. 
Once you have everything assembled, you can then go ahead and take this off if you wish to, or you can just leave it on. We're going to do this for both ends of the cable splitter. We need to connect one end of the brake cable into the handlebars. We're just putting it through and rotate the fitting so it can't fall out. And then the cable goes down the side, the left hand side of the handlebars. We're just putting cable ties around it here. These bikes actually have some little tubes welded to them which are designed to put the cables through. But we don't use these because they're really difficult to, to fit and they make everything do really sharp turns. So we just utilise these little tubes to put cable ties through. And for now, just leave everything nice and loose so you can move it around. On the bottom of the trike, again, we use a cable tie. So we're just going around the cable and again, keep everything loose. Underneath the box there's also some tubes and we just thread the cable, uh, tie through these tubes and keep everything nice and loose. We don't tie anything up at all until we actually have the cable into the disc brake caliper itself. Now adjusting the disc brakes is something which is a bit more difficult than everything else. So uh, when you're fitting the uh, discs, you'll need to um, make sure you get some additional instructions on how to adjust the calipers correctly. There's just a few things left to uh, finish off the bike now, and that is to fit the wheel reflectors. Position them opposite the valve stem. Position them on the spoke drop in the little fitting and then turn them a quarter of a turn to the right. They can be a little bit slippery sometimes, so just take care. And now we're mounting the reflectors to the front of the trike. Got the dog visiting at the same time. So both reflectors are on the front. Mud guards are on, brakes are adjusted and now we're pretty much ready to go. Thank you for watching and enjoy your tricycle for many years to come.